Hi everyone. So um, in this video, we're going to be talking about stress and how stress affects our body. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing this picture and there is actually a spot for you to draw it. If you find in your notes, it's under hormonal regulation and stress response. Um, there's a spot for you to actually draw this picture. So you can do that there. So we're talking about stress. So what's happening here is um, depending on the type of stress that we get depends on kind of how our body's going to respond. So we're going to talk about the one that we know first. And the one that we know first is our short term response, okay, which is basically going to take our body into fight or flight mode. So we talked about this a ton in chapter 11. Um, so let's go through that one just to make sure we're getting a reminder and then you guys get to actually understand what's happening in our body to cause the release of that hormone that causes flight or flight. So the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to be presented with some sort of stress. So in fight or flight, these are things like life or death situations, like um, something like you see a shark in the water, um, maybe you see someone walking down the street towards you and they look a little bit sketchy and you kind of feel like they're going to start chasing you. So maybe they have a gun. So like life or death situations where you need to either get out of there or you need to be prepared to fight to basically stay alive. So when this stress presents itself, your hypothalamus is going to interpret that stress as being a short term type of stress. And it's going to send a signal directly to your spinal cord. Okay, in chapter 11, we learned that the, um, the stress response is um, controlled by sympathetic ner nervous system, which is an autonomic nervous part of the autonomic nervous system, which we do not control, we don't think about. So it is like a reflex, which is happening in our spinal cord. We, we learned about that as well. So that's why it's going to the spinal cord rather than the brain. And what happens is the spinal cord is going to send a signal to the little hats on top of our kidneys, which are called the adrenal glands. And they're going to release our hormone, which is called epinephrine. So you guys might have heard this hormone before being called adrenaline. So that's kind of the more common name for it. So in, um, in bio 30, we're going to always refer to it as epinephrine. So epinephrine, again, takes our body into our fight or flight mode. So we, again, talked about some of the things that would happen in our body. So things like your pupils dilating, your saliva production turning off, your digestive functions turning off, um, things like heart rate and breathing rate are going to increase so that you can get more blood to your muscles that are oxygenated so that you can potentially run away or fight. Um, so all of those things are going to happen in your body once epinephrine is released. So this is a little bit different. Um, you'll notice this feedback loop isn't actually a feedback loop because as long as the stress is present, um, we'll be having this process happen. So um, this is called a short-term response because it's usually happening really, really, really fast. Okay, it only lasts for maybe a few minutes or an hour, um, which is a little bit different than the other side of the stress response. So things, again, that are like life or death situations are going to be happening in your body like this. Okay, other types of stress. So we call them long-term stress this time. And the reason for that is because it's a completely different process that's happening in our body. So rather than going into fight or flight mode, maybe you're stressed out about a test. Uh, maybe you are running late. Or maybe you got in a fight with your friend or your parents or your boyfriend and girlfriend. And you have that kind of feeling in your stomach where you almost feel sick, okay? And it's because you're stressed out. So you're not going to go into fight or flight mode if you are late for work. It's going to be a little bit stressful and it's maybe going to cause you to um, drive a little bit faster and be a little bit frazzled when you get to work. But you're not going to go to, into fight or flight mode when that happens. Okay, maybe you're sitting at a restaurant and you're one of those people that is really indecisive and it's stressing you out because there's way too many options on the menu. Okay, you're not going to go into fight or flight mode and start flipping tables and kicking down the, the waitresses and waiters because you don't know what to pick on the menu. So it's a little bit different type of stress. You still go into a stress response. It's just completely different with how that happens. So this is more of a long process. It happens um, a little bit more slowly. So it's called long term, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's happening over a long period of time. It's just not nearly as quick of a response as the short term is. 
So long-term stress can last for an hour, it can last for minutes, it can last, last for a week, it can last for years, um, depending on what type of stress you're dealing with, maybe how stressed out you are in your life. Maybe you just started a new job and you're stressed out all the time because you don't really know what you're doing. Um, maybe you're always constantly dealing with drama with your friends and you're always stressed out about that. That would be a little bit more of a long-term period than something like, Maybe you're stressed out for the text, the test that you're writing next period. Okay, so again, different um, time periods. They just happen in a little bit different way, and it's a little bit of a slower response to take place than our fast response um, to go into fight or flight. So, same thing. We have some sort of stress present. Okay, stress for a test. Maybe you're late for work. Whatever it is, your hypothalamus is again is going to interpret that as a stress. Um, and it's going to say it's going to be a long-term stress. So we're going to go down this side of the diagram. So our hypothalamus is actually going to um, signal our anterior pituitary gland. And our anterior pituitary gland is going to release something called ACTH. Now, in your guys' notes, you have a diagram or, I guess, a table that has all of the abbreviations for the hormones. Um, ACTH stands for adrenocorticotropic hormone. So what it's basically doing is it's stimulating the adrenal cortex, which is a part of the adrenal gland. You guys don't need to know or differentiate between the types, the sorry, the parts of the adrenal glands anymore. So you just need to know that it's stimulating the adrenal gland, the part that's going to release our long-term stress hormones. And we actually have two of them. So the first one we have is called cortisol. The second one is called aldosterone. And you might re recognize that word because aldosterone is something that we talked about um in bio 20 and it's going to control our kidneys and whether or not we're taking water into our kidneys or not so these two hormones do vastly different things and there's actually specific feedback loops for each one um the thing that you have to understand about this diagram is the reason that the stress response that happens the short-term stress response that happens the reason it happens so much faster is because uh, when i'm dealing with nerve impulses going from the hypothalamus to the spinal cord to the adrenal gland and releasing epinephrine that happens in milliseconds okay nerve impulses we know are very very fast or else we would be moving like a sloth all the time okay whereas the side uh, i'm sorry this side of the diagram is going to happen a lot slower because hypothalamus is going to stimulate the anterior pituitary using a nerve so that's quick but when it releases something called acth that's a hormone hormones go in the blood so the hormone has to travel through our bloodstream all the way from our brain, okay, get pumped to the heart. The, the heart is going to then pump it to our body, and it's going to eventually end up near our kidneys in the adrenal glands. So it just takes a little bit longer for that to happen. Nerve impulses happens in milliseconds. This might take, um, you know, sometimes maybe five, ten minutes for it to happen for that section of blood that's filled with ACTH to actually reach the adrenal gland and cause it to release another hormone. So it just happens a little bit slower. And that's why I have it differentiated between slow and fast. And then again, it's just depending on the type of stress that you're dealing with. So we're going to talk about these individual hormones, cortisol and aldosterone. Um, aldosterone I'm going to talk about in a different video. But if you guys want to write down that it's dealing with the kidneys and reabsorbing water, um, you can write that down right there. And then cortisol is dealing with um, basically the amount of energy that we have in our body. Um, and it causes us to store energy in a different way so that we can um, fight off infection better. Um, it might talk about our metabolism as well a little bit. So we're going to talk about that though right now. So you also have a little spot in your notes that says adrenal cortex produces three hormones. Um, and then it says cortisol underneath that. So I want you guys to fill in the blanks um, within this little diagram that's already written for you. Um, so you don't actually have to write this at the back of your notes. So cortisol, um, remember, is stimulated by long-term stress. So something like you have a test or you broke up with your boyfriend or girlfriend and you're just feeling that little like sick to your stomach feeling, you're stressed out. So that's going to go to your hypothalamus. It's going to release something called ACTH releasing factor. So that's what, what actually stimulates um, my anterior pituitary to release our adrenal 
Oh, sorry, I missed something. Um, my interior pituitary releases ACTH, um, which is adrenocorticotropic hormone, and that's going to stimulate my adrenal gland to release cortisol. So that's all there for you guys to write down. Um, cortisol is going to target my liver and my muscles, and what it's going to do, okay, I want you to make sure you put a big star beside this, this section. It increases the levels of amino acids in our blood. We know that amino acids are used to make up proteins. You, you learned that in Bio20. Um, because we need to make sure that we're able to recreate proteins in this situation when we're in some sort of stress situation. So when this happens, um, our liver is going to convert that, those amino acids and also create glucose. Remember, it's basically just you need the proper ingredients to make a glucose molecule. You need six carbons, you need 12 hydrogens, and you need six oxygens. So because amino acids are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, they can just take away the nitrogen and create a glucose just using the proper proportions. I also want you to write this down underneath. So some of the things that cortisol does is it controls your weight, it helps fight off infection, helps with quality of skin and bones and heart function. So all of these things are super important, as you guys can see. And you always have really, really high levels of cortisol in the morning. And anytime you're really, um, you're basically presented with some sort of stressful situation, it's obviously going to increase. And if you're sick, um, cortisol is also going to be really, really high because what's happening is they're going to try to help with the repair and energy levels in your body so that you can fight off that infection. Um, so. Those are all really important things to remember about cortisol. I'm going to go back to the last slide. Aldosterone, I'm going to go um, into that information on, in a different video um, because it's kind of connected to another hormone called ADH. So I'm going to be doing a separate video on ADH and aldosterone. So you'll have to watch that next. And this is the end of the video. So good luck. Draw these out a couple of times. And your quiz on these things will be tomorrow.